but can I, I want to get back to something that you said uh, mm -hmm. a, a little while ago, and, and I've talked about this in some of my uh, other videos and some of the things that I've written in, in articles and such, and that's the uh, the the openness of of our young of our young people. You know, they ask mm -hmm. questions, they feel free to ask questions, yeah. they want to ask questions, and they want to know stuff. They really want to know. I think these are really legitimate questions, and somewhere, somehow, and at some point in time, and I'm still not sure why they stop asking questions and so is there a point in in your experience where your even your children or the children that you teach in school do you see that that there's a point where there you go from wanting to know you know freely asking questions to a point of not asking questions i think there it, it started at so like maybe their third year a uh, third grade fourth grade because sometimes as teachers we teach them what they have to know. You know, it's just always, okay, this is this, memorize this, know the definition of this, what are the factors of these, and all these things. And we don't teach them how to think. You know, it's, a, it's such a different approach. You teach them what to think. You teach them what a volcano is, what an eruption is, what all these things is, but you don't teach them how it goes. You don't teach them why it does that. So, and I think when you look at the hierarchy of questions, you have to go deeper. You can't just you know, teach them what they have to know. They have to know how to get there. And with progressive curriculum, with experiential learning, with all these things, when you let these young students hone in on their curiosity at such a young age, they become really like lifelong learners. I, I feel like I'm sort of a, a good example of that. I was such a nerd <laughs> when I was growing up. I had, I was in grade three when I started reading and I fell in love with reading so much. I had classmates wanting Barbies, wanting, you know, the latest dolls and whatnot. But I tell my dad I wanted to read Nancy Drew. So I was reading Nancy Drew at grade three. At grade four, I started discovering Sherlock Holmes on my own. So I was reading Sherlock Holmes. I was reading John Grisham and all that before I finished grade school. And so my dad was really into it. It's like, okay, whatever you want to read, I'll, I'll keep buying. So I, I had Harry Potter. I grew up in those, you know, I was the girl alone in the corner just reading. I didn't do sports. I didn't want to sweat. I'd rather stay in a corner and read books. And until now, I feel like it's some such a big, big thing to cultivate in our young learners that reading isn't boring or that's being smart isn't boring. Cause you know, they might, my kids will be like, mom, that person is too smart. No, I want to be cool. And like, Hey, being smart is cool. <laughs> so, you know, it's, like, it's differentiating that mindset that, you know, if you're just reading, you, it can take you to so much places. And my children now, they don't like the novels, but they like reading wimpy kid. They like reading goosebumps, mm -hmm. like, you know, just whatever it is for them to read. And then from there, we we have like a book club here at home. I have a shelf of at the very top are my my holy grail books. Do not touch. That's mommy's. <laughs> That's the Harry Potter, John Grisham books over there. When we when you get to that level, we will read. But at the lower, even my toddler has these like hard um hard copy of books of mm -hmm. of veg pictures of vegetables. And it's just you know sometimes it doesn't have to be reading out with words. It's just them looking at the picture. And I feel like if we allow these kids to play, allow them to, you know, just at their own time, ask questions, then we hopefully we stop that, you know, that gap where they, they fall into it and they stop asking mm -hmm. because, you know, they get bored. It's like, I'd rather, you know, my, my kids are like, I can just YouTube it, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, you can YouTube. And, you know, it's all those things. But at the same point, when you when you encourage that, okay, cool, that's YouTube. I'll do it with you. And so, you know, we do that a lot. We go, oh, let's look at YouTube. Let's look at the experiment. My kids and I even have a shared Pinterest. Because I, I, I love Pinterest. So oh, we yeah, have a, yeah. a board. We have a board together of summer activities we want to do. Anything that has to do with art, with experimenting. Because they see what I, I, I do. And I just pin random things. And, and my Pinterest has like fashion and house stuff and toddler worksheets and all this. So it's a lot of things. And when they saw me doing that, they wanted to try it. And I'm mm -hmm. okay, you're old enough. They're 11 and 9. So I brought it down to their level. Oh, look at this. It's cool. It's science. And sometimes I don't even 
you know, branded as we're learning. We're right. just enjoying. We're playing. And then, you know, it it cultivates. And once they start school, it's like, oh, we, we did this before. <laughs> it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't saying right away, or we're going to study. It's my kids are allergic to, let's study. <laughs> <laughs> but when you tell them, let's play, let's do arts and crafts. And I think it generates with the younger kids. That is always my approach. You go down to their level, what they want to learn. And then, you know, sometimes they, they del- they'll direct it in a way, okay, we can do this instead of, you know, staying at just one structure. And I think us as adults, we just, we were trained to just look at that box and think just what's inside that box. But I had a college professor until now, she always told us, teach your children to call her outside the lines. No one said it's wrong <laughs> to call her outside the lines. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. So I, you know, when my, my kids are like, mommy, look at this. They were like five years old. I don't draw so well. I don't call her so well because it's outside the line. I'm like, no, it's still nice. So, you know, it's like, I think we have to, to show them if you make a mistake, it's fine. Tomorrow, let's do better. The next day we can, you know, or we'll relearn it if you don't understand. And I think the younger generation now, these Gen Z kids, these alpha generation, all the, all of them, if they get to that point where this is fun, it's cool, it's in to be smart, you know, and to be curious and read books, not just, you know, all those things. And of course, sports and all of that, everything is cool too. But mm-hmm. yeah, 